Kia ora, welcome to Central News for Thursday the 22nd of May. I'm Anne-Marie Case Miller. Waikato Police and the Waipa District Council are joining forces to ensure the coming Queen's birthday weekend is a repeat of last year's fatal free weekend. The Make It to Monday road safety campaign will be jointly run by Australian and New Zealand police and police across the country will be highly visible during this time. They'll be enforcing the four kilometre speed tolerance and breath testing every driver stopped regardless of the circumstances. Local writer Chris Williams, along with director Nick Wilkinson and musical director Trevor Faville, are getting ready for the July world premiere of the musical State Highway 48 in Hamilton. State Highway 48 has been a personal project for writer Chris Williams for the last five years, and he explains that he happened to write it by chance. Right. I am um, being a creative person. Um, I've kind of I've, I've, I've write songs as my kind of creative outlet, and I've been doing that for a little while now. Um, and I produced an album uh, three or four years ago, which I released, and I've got another one which I'm going to get out probably later this year. But anyway, one night I was just wheedling away on the piano as I do every night, and I developed a kind of little um, riff, I suppose you'd call it, that was sort of sounded quite good. And I thought, no, nah, this is not a song; it's a, more of a like a TV show or something. And I thought, no, nah, it's more like a theme for a musical. So honestly, that night I thought, right, I think I'll write a musical now. And then I got underway. And then what I did was I kind of developed a couple of songs, just the music part, started thinking about the overall story, and then I told everyone that I was writing a musical. <laughs> and, um, and then so everyone started to ask me how my musical was coming along. And then so eventually I thought, well, I better get, you know, get it done, because all, all I would say, well, I'm about halfway through kind of thing. And then I sort of just slowly but surely got it underway, and now here we are. Morrinsville is hoping to cash in on its cream of the country tag and become the cow capital of New Zealand. Matamata Piako District Council member Nikki Robb has put forward a proposal for Morrinsville to have its own version of the cow parade, which is claimed as the world's largest public art event. Mrs Robb's vision for Morrinsville includes a herd of uniquely decorated life-size fibreglass cows that could go on permanent display around the town, linking in with Wallace Gallery as a contact point for artists. The idea has the support of Matamata Piako District Mayor Jan Barnes, as well as the Morrinsville Promotion Association and the Morrinsville Art Gallery Charitable Trust. It's hoped to have the idea underway in the next couple of months. Taking a look at the marine forecast now, Raglan, you can expect a southwesterly of 20 knots, turning early Friday of, uh, to a northwest of 20 knots. High tides at 5 minutes past 5 a.m. Tauranga, a northwest of 20 knots uh, expected, with rough sea expected as well, and a high tide at 1.55 a.m. Up next on Central News, a successful child protection program developed in Hamilton is in the international spotlight. Kia ora, welcome back to Central News. A successful child protection program developed in Hamilton will be centre stage at a prestigious international child abuse conference in Japan. Anthea Simcock, Chief Executive of Child Matters, has been asked to speak at the conference and I spoke with her recently to find out more. What effect has Buddy Day had on Hamilton? Hamilton itself, um, the, we, we do a research project every year and people in Hamilton are now saying, yes, this is an issue, it does happen in my community, and yes, it is my problem. They're not always 100% sure about what they need to be doing about it, so we've, we need to support them to move to that position so that they're confident. Um, in the other areas, they are still moving towards that space. They're saying, yes, it's, it is quite a problem, but maybe it's up for someone else to solve it, or, Maybe it's a problem, but it's not necessarily here. So they're still moving, and um, our goal is for people to be saying, we all have a role to play. There is something each of us can do. We can all be looking out for kids, and we can think about ways in a daily basis in our lives, at work, at home, at sports, that we can contribute to the well-being of children. 
and that could be at work of saying, look, if we, if we bully our staff at work, if we stress our staff, what's going to happen when they go home? What's going to happen to their kids if they are tired and stressed at the end of the day? So when we say everyone has a role to play, it might not be in being experts with children, but it's a role to play in making a society where children can flourish. We're sometimes scared of being seen as nosy neighbours or sticking our noses into other people's business, aren't we? And, and that's, it's so important that people realise that children can't speak up for themselves and that they need other people to do so. So the second part of Buddy Day, what actually happens before the buddies get to the carers is, the, is a schools program where the blank white buddies are sent to the schools and then they create these wonderful people in, in whatever form they choose. So the classes are debating, they're discussing, they're communicating, um, and they're learning about different um, ethnic groups as their buddies take shape. But they're also learning that it's okay to stand up for your buddy. It's okay to ask for help if buddy's sad. They learn about what's, what being a good buddy is all about, and hopefully those values stay with them throughout their lives. Buddy Day is the 14th of November this year. When do registrations open? Yeah, well, schools can get involved with us next month in June to register their interest because, of course, there are a limited number of buddies and the general public from July onwards. But if people are worried that they might not um, be on the list or they might forget, they can contact us now and we will give them a reminder. There is a third um, aspect and that is there is a buddy program for businesses. So for our key sponsors, they actually take a, a half a dozen buddies to work and decorate them as a, as a work-based program. And they just love that. And the workers really get involved. So that's another aspect as well. For more details on how to get involved, go to buddyday.org.nz. Through partnerships with other local community, professional and government organisations, the Mates Men's Network aims to support and empower men and address the issues of depression, suicide and men's mental health in a non-threatening, informal forum. I spoke with Waikato Regional Manager Mark Ball and Marketing Manager Philip Key to find out more. The Mates Network is it's about men talking to men. It's about men getting to the point where they feel they have an issue that they need to share. It's where they can go and sit alongside other guys that have had or have got similar issues, where they can share and get empowerment to um, help get over their, the problems and issues that they have. How are you going to achieve this? By knocking down some big roadblocks. And one of those roadblocks is the is the Kiwi male's attitude that she'll be right or harden up or, or whatever. Um, it's, about, it's about getting them to realise that they've got a problem and that it's okay. And then for them to share their problem and just relate with other guys, but not in a pub situation, not in a situation where there's this expectation to be your, your average bloke. This is where it's about yeah, being personal and um, sharing. Philip, you're holding a launch event on Friday, June the 13th. Tell me about that. Well, Mates is based very much on a community emphasis and so we felt it's, it's important to launch it officially in the community of Hamilton and that community event's going to be held at the Western Community Centre on Friday, June the 13th, between seven and nine. And um, it's also about celebrating the, the evolution of a a group called Men into the Mates Network and Men was a Hamilton based group and now it's evolved into the Mates Network, the Mates Men's Network. So we felt it was important to recognise that transformation and that event's going to be held as I said in Norton and it's going to have a, a lot of entertainment, a lot of food and um, of course recognition of what the Mates Network is all about. Do people just turn up? They do, yeah, very much just come along to the event. It's going to be well publicised. Uh, just gonna, it's going to be held in the community centre, the Western Community Centre, so people can just come along and they can certainly um, take part in what is going to be a very memorable night. 
Mark, is getting men to open up and talk half the battle? Absolutely. There's that old adage that a problem shared is a problem halved. Um, very true here in the fact that, um, yeah, if a man gets to that point where, yeah, it's sort of getting pretty serious, then he's, it's that point that we want to be there and for him to share it with us and then, then enable us to empower him to, to move on. Philip, you're looking for facilitators to run the meetings. Tell me about that. Well, of course, with this, it's, it's very much a case of, um, of men coming along to these meetings that we have, and there is a need for uh, facilitators to be participating in that meeting. So at the moment, that, that network of facilitators is building up, and of course, we're looking for more to come on board. The Mates Men's Network formal launch is on Friday the 13th of June at the Western Community Centre, 46 Hyde Street in Hamilton, from 7 to 9pm. To find out more about the Mates Men's Network, go to mates.org.nz. Still to come on Central News, we find out about the Mid-Island Cat Club show and speak with one of the youngest Waikato Pistons. That's next on Central News. Kia ora, welcome back to Central News. If you love cats, then the Mid-Island Cat Club Cat Show is a wonderful opportunity to see not just the much-loved household pet, but also a vast array of strange and unusual breeds of both long and short hair cats on display. Plus, it's also a chance to watch the very best New Zealand and international judges at work. I recently spoke with the show secretary Sue Ford and President Avril Macbeth to find out more. Welcome to Central News, Sue Ford and Avril Macbeth from the Mid-Island Cat Club and you've brought along a couple of beautiful friends. This is Toby and you've got Gingy there. Now it's kind of quite exciting ladies because you've got a, a, an annual cat show happening in Te Awamutu this Saturday. Sue, tell me about it. The cat show is being held at Te Awamutu College Hall and it's the first time we've had an all breeds cat show for our club. In the past it's just been short hairs. We've right. got a special um, uh, entry for children, for their pets. We'd like some more um, and if they want to contact me at home on um, 0787191157 we can still take entries for that. So it's not necessarily about a beautiful purebred breed such as this little gorgeous British black tipped British. Thank now the, now Sue so, uh, Avril this one is normally like, like it's like a British blue isn't it? It's the same yeah just different colour. Right and quite rare you were saying. Yeah there's not many in New Zealand. He is purring like you wouldn't believe his little motor is 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 rumbling away I'll be surprised if the microphone doesn't pick it up. So he's a short hair and Gingy over there is the long hair. Well, he's a Boo Miller, and he's a long haired Boo Miller. And usually these come in short hair. Oh. And um, he's a cross between a lilac Burmese and a chinchilla. Oh. So these are, the long hairs aren't quite as um, common as the short hairs. And we have got a number of short hair Boo Millers in our show. Obviously you ladies love cats and I must admit I'm a cat person as well but the cat show isn't just for cat lovers is it? It's for everybody, everyone that you know everyone has a household pet generally and it's usually a cat. <laughs> that's true, <laughs> that's true, that's absolutely true. So what are people going to see at the show? Well we've got 90 entries and wow. we have got some new breeds on display, a, a breed called Toygas which are meant to be like tigers, toy for toy and igers for tigers. And they are a um, cross between a Bengal and a domestic, so they are striped cats, basically. Wow. I bet you, do they talk like that? Meow. Um, no, oh, actually, the, <laughs> the, the Bengals do talk a lot in the terms that they have got a sort of a really wild wow sound, but the Bengals are usually spotted or marbled. And oh. these are slightly different, so they're going to be on display. We've also got um, the usual Siamese, Burmese, um, Persians, exotics. Um, we've got some Norwegian forest cats, some sphinx, which are the hairless cats. And wow, like on that movie, 
Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. How did you get into cat shows? Well, I started, I just had a white domestic cat and I had a visitor come and she had shown cats and she said, oh, your cat's beautiful, you should take it to a show. Mm -hmm. And I'd never had anything to do with cat shows. And a short time later in the Waikato Times, there was an advert for a cat show in Hamilton. So I rang up and I entered this domestic cat and he was a really big white cat. And so I took him along and he scooped the pool. So I was hooked. And that's where I saw my first British Blue and I thought, next cat I get is going to be a British Blue. And so I have two British Blue at home as well as that one. Wow. I have um, Fitzy, who's 16 and a half, and he was a wild cat that was hand raised from when he was about four weeks old. And he's still going. I keep thinking he must be dying soon, but he just keeps going yeah, and going. can live to 25. Really? Yeah. Is that right? Yes, I've had a Burmese live to 21, 22, Gosh. but it all comes down to um, looking after them well and giving them a good diet. Oh, getting like oh look, he's licking me. He's got the salt <laughs> off the skin or something. <laughs> They're beautiful natured cats, aren't mm. they? How do you find in the cat show, are there any cat fights? <laughs> uh, occasionally, yes. Um, I do remember um, some years ago some ladies being removed. <laughs> it's, I think it comes down to whenever there's any animals involved there's always competition mm, mm. so but if you can't go and show your cat and enjoy the day it's something wrong. <laughs> Don't go. Yeah exactly exactly <laughs> yeah. and it's at the Te Awamutu College Hall isn't yes, it? Yes. Entry is very very reasonable isn't it? To Toby agrees with me there. <laughs> well it's it's only five dollars for the children but for the people who've got pedigrees we have to pay to New Zealand Cat Fancy. Right so, okay. Um, their entries are fourteen dollars per ring, so I've got four judges. Mm -hmm. A ring is a judging. So, now what, when you're judging a cat, what are you looking for? Well, each cat's different. For example, with Toby, with the British, you're looking for a. a, a oh. Oh, 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 he doesn't see, like that. He doesn't like me talking about him. Oh, sorry. Um, we're looking for a lovely crisp coat, which they call breaks open. And we're looking for a very rounded cat, like a lovely rounded body, a lovely rounded head, small ears, big width between the ears, um, a nice straight nose, lovely big round eyes. In the case of the blues, they've got to have really goldy eyes, deep goldy amber eyes. In the case of Toby, the greener the better. And you can see he's got beautiful he green beautiful. eyes. I could eat this cat. Oh, Toby! <laughs> <laughs> So he's not liking TV Central <laughs> today, though. <laughs> I think it's enough. because he's looking at her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't wait to come and see this cat show because it sounds absolutely delightful. Just Ladies, put him thanks, on the bench and Thanks for bringing in Toby and Gingy, yeah. and uh, all the very best. Thank you, Thank very, you very much. much. The Mid Island Cat Club show is on this Saturday, the 24th of May, at the Tiawamutu College Hall in Alexandra Street, and opens to the public from 11 a.m. Up next on Central News, we speak with one of the youngest Waikato Pistons, Alex Tama. Welcome back to Central News. At just 19 years of age, Alex Tama is one of the youngest players in this year's NBL, and he's making a name for himself as one to watch. I recently caught up with the young Waikato Pistons Ford to find out how his first season is progressing so far. So Alex, it's your first year with Waikato Pistons. How are you enjoying the season so far? Yeah, I'm really enjoying um, playing with the older players. Guys like Corin, uh, Akeem, Casey Frank, uh, I'm really enjoying that step up as well, playing with men so, from high school. So yeah, it's going really good and I'm really enjoying it. What are some of the challenges you've faced so far? Uh, some of the challenges, I guess just injury. I, as a young guy, you kind of think your body's invincible and you, you kind of don't really think that you're going to get injuries and stuff like that, but the yeah, challenge is just being proactive about coming back from injuries and like rehabbing properly and that kind of thing. Now, you've, you've been helping out a lot with the younger players and development clinics and the skills days for the under-11s. Tell me about those experiences. Yeah, oh, they're a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, I find it really rewarding helping the younger kids. Uh, like. Yeah, I'd like to see some more guys from the Waikato come through and play in the Waikato Pistons. So, yeah, it's really cool, really rewarding. And I guess they look up to you. They'd see you as a role model as well. You're so close in age to them. Yeah, no, it's different than what I'm used to. It's kind of weird, I guess, but no, I kind of like it. Um, 
yeah, it's good. <laughs> There's a lot of responsibility that goes with being a role model. How are you handling that, like with social media and things like that? Oh, it's fine. Uh, I think I'm mature enough now to like watch what I post on Facebook, and I, I don't post anything stupid. So, yeah, it's fine. It's all good. That's the main thing. Now, what's a highlight been uh, for the season so far? A uh, highlight for the season is me just being in the team. Uh, I'm really just enjoying being here. Uh, I take each game as it comes and yeah, it's going good. What's some of the advice that the older, more experienced players have given you? Uh, it's good having Piero and Casey, like guys that play in my position as well. So they've just been helping me with the plays, uh, new post moves, that kind of thing. Just helping me and then, like coming into the team. It's my first year in the NBL, so yeah, that kind of thing. They've really helped me with that. So your position is forward. What's yep. your job on court? Uh, run the floor, get rebounds, play hard, play defense, shoot the ball when I'm open. Yeah, really just playing hard and just being physical and getting into those bigger guys like Truman, who we just played in the weekend. So, yeah. Any standout games for you so far? Um, I've had a couple good games, I think, good shooting games. Uh, I think I'm being consistent, which is a good thing. So I just need to keep coming out, playing hard, and focus on the job at hand and that kind of thing, and just yeah, get the job done for the team. Now, this Thursday, you're at Hamilton Boys High School, Southland Sharks, 7 p.m. Are you looking forward to the game? Yeah, it's going to be a really exciting game. Um, I'm sure the crowd are going to be on the edge of their seat. It's going to be a nail biter. So yeah, it's going to be good to see a good turnout of fans. And um, yeah, hopefully we can get the W. Got to get the W. What else are your, what are your future goals? Uh, future goals is to play, play professionally, hopefully for the breakers on the AMBL one day. Uh, I also want to go to college, take that college path. So, yeah, well, I'm working towards that so far and we'll see where that takes me. But hopefully professionally one day is my goal. Alex Tama, we wish you all the very best of luck. Yeah, cool. Thank you very much. You can see Alex Tama in action tonight at the Hamilton Boys High School gym when the Waikato Pistons take on the defending champs, the Southland Sharks. Tickets are available at the door and tip-off is at 7pm. Taking a look at the weather for the Waikato now. Hamilton becoming cloudy with drizzle later, a northwesterly wind expected and a high of 17, a low of just 12 degrees. Paroa, same for you with a high of 18 and a low of 12. Matamata, your high 16, your low 13. Tawamutu, 17, your high. And Tokuroa, you'll get through to 14 with an overnight low of 11. Heading to the Bay of Plenty now with Tauranga expecting cloudy periods to increase, northwesterly winds and a high of 18 degrees with a low of 13 overnight. To Puki, your high is 16 and your low not much lower, 13 degrees. That's Central News for today. Make sure you like us on Facebook and let us know if there's news or an event in your community. Thanks for joining me. I'm Anne-Marie Case-Miller. Ka kite anō. This has been an Alpha Media production, a division of Television Media Group. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.